As an accountant, I have the pleasure of working with a variety of non-business owners from a variety of different industries and also different backgrounds. Now, one of the things I help them do is to creatively set up their business structures in the most tax efficient ways possible. Now, today's video, I'm going to be talking about whether it's actually worthwhile for you as a non-resident looking to set up a company here in the UK. Now, if this is your first time here, my name is Tess and I'm a UK-based qualified accountant and I share weekly videos on this channel to help entrepreneurs like yourself grow and thrive in their businesses. If you want to see weekly videos from this channel, please do make sure you give this video a like, make sure to subscribe and follow us across all social media platforms. Now, some of you that have been following me for a while will know that a couple of months ago, I posted a video about how a non-resident or those who are based overseas can actually go about setting up a company here in the UK. If you haven't watched that video, I'll be sure to leave the link to that in the description box below. Now, in today's video, I want to address some of the things you actually need to think about concretely before you actually take that step and make a decision on, is it actually worthwhile for me as a non-resident to open a UK company or should you actually dismiss it altogether? Now, everyone's business circumstance varies as well as their actual reasons for why they would want to open a UK company as a non-resident in the first place. However, the considerations I'm gonna be talking about in this video will be applicable to you in the wide variety of cases. So it is definitely beneficial for you to stick through to the end of this video. Now, the first thing I'm going to be talking about is to consider access to a wider market. Now, if you're a non-resident and you currently have a business, I don't know, in Nigeria, in Ghana, Kenya, somewhere outside of the UK, essentially, you might be selling products or you might already be running a particular service. Now, one of the things that you might be considering is, you know, do I actually want to open up a UK company for the purposes of actually accessing new markets. One of the benefits to consider with actually opening a UK company as someone who's a foreigner or an overseas person is that you get to actually benefit from having access to that UK market. Now, one of the considerations to think about as a non-resident looking to open a UK company here in the UK is in relation to international exposure for your business, okay? And by opening up a limited company for your business as an overseas person, you're essentially gonna be improving the international exposure for your business. It's likely that by you actually opening up a UK company, you're gonna be able to actually get access to a wider variety of funding and also business grants and things like that, which can help you actually then improve your business growth along the line in the future. Now, this can obviously be extremely beneficial depending on what business it is you're actually pursuing at the moment and what your business goals are in the near future. One of the other considerations I would advise you to think about doing is consider the preparation work that you need to do ahead of actually opening up a UK company as a foreign person or someone who's currently based overseas. Okay, and that includes you thoroughly researching the company name that you're looking to register that company under. In most cases, if you're already running a business outside of the UK, you might just wanna get that same name registered here if it's not already in use. Okay, so that's where your research would come in. You also want to make sure that you have in hand the relevant identification that you want to provide at the point of registration. Amongst other things, it's essential that you have thoroughly prepared what your correspondence address is going to be, what your registered business address is also going to be, as well as who is going to be the relevant directors um, for that company that you're registering. Now, I have a few videos linked up already in my channel, so please do make sure you watch them because they can definitely give you a steer in the right direction on how to get things like your correspondence address set up, how to you know, go about thinking about what the best registered business address is for you, particularly for someone who is a non-resident. Now, due to a limited company being a separate legal entity in its own right, 
One of the things that I'd strongly advise you to do is to think about business banking. Okay, so this essentially means how are you going to go about actually opening a business bank account for this new limited company that you're going to open up for your business? It's going to be very important that you do this because this is going to be one of the best ways for you to actually keep your personal transactions completely separate for your business transactions. And it's also going to be extremely crucial because when it comes to you actually preparing your financial accounts, your statements of accounts at the end, end of the year it's going to be much much easier for you know any accountant that you're giving that work to to actually trace all your transactions and create your return in an effective way possible now one of the biggest things that a lot of non-resident owners tend to face or have an issue with is actually being able to open a business bank account here in the UK now what I would say is that a lot of the high street banks so banks like NatWest, HSBC etc will generally tend to be reluctant to opening a bank account for you as a non-resident simply because you don't have a physical business address where you're actually operating from here in the UK. However, one of the ways for you to bypass this is by actually considering opening a digital bank account. Okay, so your best bet might be to consider banks such as Revolut banks, for instance, okay, and also other digital banks that are out there. So that's the way I would suggest you could go about navigating around the issue of you know having those struggles about actually opening a business bank another consideration you might want to think about is how are you actually going to run your business remotely okay so if you're a non-resident and you're looking to actually open up a uk limited company here in the uk one of the issues you might encounter is having difficulties with actually running that business from a remote standpoint okay so how are you going to deal with you know taking relevant calls how are you going to deal with taking in orders goods and products when they actually come here into the uk do you have someone here who you could potentially you know assign as being your representative here in the uk to help you you know carry out those admin tasks okay another thing you might want to think about is who's going to be around to actually take any relevant phone calls when they come here here in the uk another issue you might run into is maybe when HMRC or indeed Companies House actually writes to you regarding an urgent notification that they want you to deal with. Who is going to be around to actually get those letters to actually receive that on your behalf and process those queries? So these are some of the things that you will definitely want to think about ahead of actually looking to open up a UK company for your non-resident business now the next consideration that you might want to think about is in relation to tax complications now believe it or not as a non-resident who has a uk limited company here in the uk you might be in a position where you're actually paying tax twice okay once in your home country or in your native country and then again here in the uk now this isn't the case in every single situation so it really does depend on how your business is structured and what sort of advice you're able to get that is targeted to your current situation so it's not in all cases i will stress that but certainly it's something that can arise um, and it's something that i definitely want to flag up to you so that you pay attention to how you're actually going to navigate this. Now, at the end of the day, there's no right or wrong answer when it comes to thinking about whether or not it's worthwhile opening up a UK company as a non-resident. It entirely depends on what your business goal is, okay, for your business. It also depends on how much level of responsibility you are willing to actually take on board, as well as whether you're actually looking to benefit from some of the things that come about as a result of actually having a UK company for your business. While I was thinking about some of the considerations that I've already discussed in this video, I think it's important for you 
to actually think about what your responsibilities are going to be as a director that has a company here in the UK, as well as some of the other things you definitely need to know when you are starting a business here in the UK. If you're interested in learning more about this, then do make sure you watch the videos that pop up here. Thank you so much for watching. And if you ever want to work with me on a one-to-one -one basis, you can do so by using the link down in the description box below.